Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to present to you uh, an interesting problem uh, related to the geometry of sphere. Um, I, I would say it's kind of unexpected result, let's put it this way, at least unexpected for me. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the unizor.com uh, website because there are notes for any lecture and um, also problems are usually given with answers and sometimes with solutions. In this case I do have both answer and solution but if you try to solve this problem yourself and just check um, against the answer uh, that would be much much more useful obviously and that's exactly what I'm suggesting you to do. Now if you cannot solve it that's okay uh, the solution is uh, on the website and I will present it in a lecture um, but then try it maybe afterwards to do it just by yourself all right so the problem uh, consider we have a sphere and uh, a cylindrical hole is actually drilled inside that sphere so the cylinder has the axis of symmetry going exactly through the center of a sphere, so it's very symmetrical kind of a thing. So the sphere was drilled in a um, cylinder. Well, it's not actually a cylinder, it's a cylinder and two caps. That's what we are cutting off from, this, uh, from the sphere. Now, what I would like to know is the volume of the remaining part. The remaining part, it's like some kind of a ring um, without tops. Actually, you know what, when you, um, in, uh, if you go to a good restaurant and they give you napkins in some kind of rings, the rings usually have shape of this type of thing. So, um, now, to evaluate the volume of the remaining part, one would think that you really need lots of information. For instance, the radius of a sphere, right? Then the radius of a cylinder you are cutting through, uh, the height of the cylinder. I mean, there are certain um, parameters which must be uh, specified. Um, now, to our surprise, at least to my surprise, there is only one parameter which is actually sufficient to determine uh, the volume of the remaining part after we uh, drill this, the, 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 this cylinder in. It's the H, the height of that cylinder. Apparently, if just this one parameter is given, without the radius of the sphere, without the radius of the cylinder, whatever, um, everything else seems to be just, you know, uh, going, putting together a nice formula for the remaining uh, volume after the drilling process. So just one parameter, H, is given, nothing else. Well, in theory, you might kind of understand it, that if you have a bigger uh, sphere um, and this parameter is given, it probably means it should be a wider cylinder, something like this. If you have a bigger sphere, if you have just this length of the height, then it should be somewhere here. And the remaining part, although of a bigger radius, would have probably thinner walls, something like this. And the volume of the remaining part would be the same. So only one parameter H is given. All right, now let's go to the calculations. We have to get the formula, and hopefully the formula will depend only on one parameter H. Now, I would like actually to specify radius of the sphere as capital R, radius of a cylinder as lowercase r, and since I needed the caps here, let's say the uh, height of, the of each cap is capital H, here and there. Now, what do I know just looking at this picture? Well, first of all, obviously I can relate capital R, lowercase r, and h using the Pythagorean theorem, right? So it's r square is equal to lowercase r square plus half of the h square. That's one equation, right? Another equation is, well, if you 
just drill through well uh, if, if you imagine the axis now the axis of the sphere is basically uh, two radiuses right and each radius is equal to half of the height of the cylinder plus height of the cap right so each radius is equal to half of the height of the cylinder which is this one or on the bottom it's this one plus height of the uh, cap that's what I know so if my um, unknown variables are radius of the sphere radius of a cylinder and height of the cap three unknown variables I have only two equations so obviously I cannot determine them knowing only the height of the cylinder h but maybe it will not be necessary because maybe in the formula in the final formula everything will just you know reduce itself and uh, cancel itself and uh, only dependency on the lowercase h will remain in the formula all right so now let's go to calculations well the v which is the volume of the remaining part after the drilling is equal to volume of the sphere minus volume of the cylinder and minus two volumes of the caps right volume of the cylinder and two caps we take out okay in terms of these variables it's equal to volume of the sphere is 4 third pi r cube minus volume of the cylinder is if radius is lowercase r and the height is lowercase h it's pi r square h and minus uh, uh, 2 volume of the cap uh, is uh, pi h square 3 r minus h that was in one of the previous lectures when I was talking about caps somehow I remember this uh, formula quite frankly it's not an easy thing to remember but I think that's what it is so alright so we have all these dependencies on r capital R lowercase r and, 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 and capital uh, H which we don't really know however I can use these uh, uh, dependency which I know about to basically use it here so what's the result if I will substitute so let's say I will um, leave just the capital H as unknown and uh, R and R will be in terms of lowercase h and uppercase h so 4 third pi instead of r I will put h plus h over 2 cube minus pi r square instead of r square I will put capital R square minus h over 2 square and instead of r I will put this so that would be r square which is this h plus h over 2 square minus so that's r square minus h over 2 square that's r square and times h and minus 2 pi h square 3r minus h so 3r it will be 3 capital H plus uh, this so it would be minus h so it's 2h um, plus 3h over 2 is that right 
Well, we'll see. I mean, hopefully I didn't make a mistake. All right, now let me wipe out this. And we will go up equals. All right, let's just you know open all the parentheses. Um, let me put it this way: pi will go out and I will probably have oh wait a moment, wait a moment. I think I have to divide it by three. Yeah, that's right. I said I remember the formula, but actually I did not. Now I remember because I have to have one third actually also out. So it's not just pi, it would be pi over 3. But I will have to multiply by 3 this middle part. So I don't have 3 here, I don't have 3 there. And what's remaining? Okay, 4 and this cube, right? So it would be 4h cube plus 3h squared times this, h over 2 times 4, that's 12 divided by 2, 6, so it's 6h squared h plus um, 3h and this square that would be 4 okay so it would be 3h h square and the cube would be h cube over 8 now this is 4 so it's h cube over 2 minus minus now this should be multiplied by 3 and divided by 3 because I put 3 in the denominator, right? So uh, this is, well obviously h over 2 square will, will be uh, reduced so I will have only h square uh, plus 2 times h times h over 2 plus, two a plus h h so it will be 3 h square minus 3 h uh, or case a h right and then h square over 4 and h square over 4 will be reduced minus the last one 4 okay pi goes out and 3 goes out so it's 4 h cube and 3 h square h and I close now would be nice if everything would be just um, cancelling out okay 4 h cube 4 h cube okay 6 h square h Uh, and 3 h square h. Now I remember it was reduced. I missed something. Okay, how about this? h h square plus something is wrong here I think I missed H here here yeah this is the H of course my fault so that would be H and would be H square of course I forgot this H to multiply by this now everything is cancelled out 6 H square H minus 3 and minus 3 and 3h h square and 3h h square 
You see, everything is canceling out. And the only remaining part is pi h cubed divided by 2 and 3, 6. So the volume of the remaining part depends only on the h. And this is a very interesting formula, actually. If instead of h, you would put, let's say, 2x. What this formula would look right, uh, like, it would be 8 over 6, so it's 4 third pi x cubed. Now, this is a formula for the volume of a sphere. So, basically what it says is that the remaining part would be exactly equal in volume to a volume of a sphere with a radius equal to half of the height of the cylinder. Strange. I don't know how it happens and why I cannot explain it, but I think it's an interesting observation. All right? Well, that's it. Now, I suggest you to do the following. If you did not do it yourself before, I, uh, before the lecture, do it right now. Uh, just go through all these calculations. It's very useful because it basically involves all the elements of the sphere. The volume of a sphere, the volume of the cap, plus a cylinder also involved. And uh, a couple of, uh, you know, accurate uh, calculations which you have to do. Um, hopefully without making any mistakes, like I made a little mistake here, but that's okay. Um, and uh, see if you will get the same result. Well, other than that, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.